Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris, and to keep with the theme for my harmonics videos, this is an auto harp. I don't know how to play an auto harp, and I would venture to say this is horribly out of tune. Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris, and this video is part three in my series of harmonics in vibrator seismic acquisition. In my previous videos, I covered what harmonics are, what their spectra looks like in vibrosize, we also looked at extracted harmonics from a vibrator sweep, and we had to listen to them as well. In this video, I'm going to talk about the possibility that we can harness the added harmonic frequencies for seismic imaging. Here we go. In my previous video, I showed and played recordings of the first, second, and third harmonics as decomposed from a harmonically contaminated sweep. In this video, I'm going to show you the results of processing a seismic test line with this sample processing flow. Armed with the ability to precisely extract harmonics from sweep recordings, we're going to look at the first process in the flow, correlation. Here's a very basic explanation of the correlation process. We start off with a basic reflectivity, which represents layering within the Earth. We use a vibrator to impart a signal of known length and frequency range into the ground. The wave is partly reflected at reflecting interfaces in the Earth, with the reflections being received at surface receivers, giving us an uncorrelated seismic recording. With all the geophones recording, we end with a very confusing shot record full of uncorrelated traces. Enter correlation. During correlation, processors generally use the ground force or the pilot signal as the correlation operator. The end result is a correlated seismic trace. Repeating the correlation process for each trace results in trace data which is now ready for processing. The correlation process is repeated for every shot point in the survey. Traditionally, the correlation process will harness frequency content within the fundamental limits. However, with precisely extracted harmonics used as correlation operators, we should be able to extend our seismic bandwidth. For this research, I actually correlated the data with a total of 19 operators from harmonic decomposition of the sweeps. However, I'm only going to show a handful of results in this video. We're going to look at the correlation with the pilot signal, which is the signal used to generate the fundamental sweep. I also generated a synthetic second and third harmonic based on the fundamental to use as correlation operators. We're going to look at the results using the first second and third harmonics as extracted from the ground force at each sweep point using our frequency dependent Gabor decomposition. The correlation operator was the only variable change in the following processed images. I have provided a link below to the images so you can follow along and see the detail for yourself. The first process results use the pilot sweep as the correlation operator. The inset image shows the frequency of the data within this bounding box. The blue line is the spectra of the data prior to FX decon. The black line is the current image's results, and the red line, currently hidden, is for reference to the pilot spectra. We are going to look at the pilot correlated image first. This is what a typical image would look like for the survey area with many strong coherent reflections. The image is being truncated to 500 milliseconds as we know that harmonics and their higher frequencies are attenuated with depth, so we are really only going to be interested in the near surface. I'm going to cycle through all the other correlations and make some observations at the end. Next is the synthetic H2, synthetic H3, The first harmonic as extracted from the ground force. Second harmonic as extracted from the ground force. And third harmonic as extracted from the ground force. Back at the pilot correlated image and comparing it to the extracted H1 image, it is debatable whether there is an improvement in resolution. However, when we compare the pilot to H2, we see an increase in thin reflectors in the near surface. Even H3 appears to have complementary thin imaging. To get a better look, we zoom into the pilot image and compare it again with the H1, and we now see that the H1 image appears to have a few more thin reflectors than the pilot. 
and back to the pilot again and compare it to the H2 and we see that the second harmonic has revealed far more thin reflectors in the near surface with H3 appearing to complement H2 as well. And now back to the pilot and compare to the results of combining H2 and H3 into one correlation operator. The results produce a very intriguing imaging in the near surface. Again, if you want to have a look at the results yourself, click the link in the description below and have a look. To recap, in a vibrator survey, harmonics are generated when a base plate warps and flexes. These harmonics and their higher frequency content have traditionally been considered noise to attenuate. However, if the harmonics are decomposed precisely from the sweep, their higher harmonic content can be harnessed to increase resolution in the near surface. As a reminder, I have the processed images available down below to click on and download if you'd like to have a look at them yourself. Also, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, share the video in your networks, and subscribe to my channel. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.